And Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. We glorify you for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for what you are still doing. Thank you because the word of life, the word of power, the word for healing, the word for deliverance, the word for salvation, and the word and the word to make us fulfilled is coming out of this place and going all over this nation, all over this continent of Africa, and it's going beyond. You have lifted up the people of this church. I pray, Lord, the throne where you have lifted them up they'll never come down in jesus name your favor upon your church your power in your church the anointing in your church the authority in the church and all the dedicated workers in the church i pray lord will be moving on from glory to glory in jesus name we well, thank you for all our churches all over this land. Thank you for our headquarters church in Lagos. And thank you for the great things you've done through all the leaders, all the workers, all the pastors, all the people there we pray. The work of our hand over there at the headquarters will remain sustained forever in Jesus' name. All our states, all our nations, all over Africa and beyond Africa. We pray, Lord, you'll prosper this work in our hand. You'll prosper this ministry in the hand of everyone in Jesus' name. Our fathers and our mothers, our children, our youths, and all our students, Lord, we pray your blessings will abide upon everyone. We pray, Lord, as we send the message for today, I pray you bless everyone in the reading of the word and study of the word, application of the word, obedience of the word in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know it is confirmed already. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We consider the blessing of the Lord. Uh, we're looking at an important message today. Habakkuk chapter 2. In Habakkuk chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 4. Behold, a soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. The just, that's the justified. The people who have come to the Lord, you have confessed your sins to the Lord, and you are justified. What does it mean to be justified? Just as if I'd never sinned. Just as if you've never done anything wrong, and the favor of God is upon you. And the love of God has given you salvation. And the grace of God has drawn you into the family of God. And then you become just justified. And then you keep on living by faith. Living by faith. We're looking at Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 1. We're looking at verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith in the old testament the just shall live by faith as you open the pages of the new testament the just the justified they will live by faith i'm coming to galatians chapter 3 in galatians chapter 3 we're looking at verse 11 galatians chapter 3 I'm reading verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. We found that in our Bible. It goes on saying Old Testament, New Testament, Habakkuk, and then Romans, and then Galatians, the just shall live by faith. It's telling us how important that is. If you want to be justified in the sight of the Lord, if you want to be justified for time and for eternity, you must have this faith in God. Because the just, the justified, shall live by faith. The young and the old, there's no other way to be just and justified. The men and the women, there's no other way to be just and justified. The black and the white, there's no other way to be just and justified. Those of us in Africa and those of us all over there in the West, there's no way to be just and justified. The just justified shall live by faith. I'm coming to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, and we're looking at verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. Do you see that? 
the just shall live by faith. He said us over and over that if you want to be just in the sight of God, you don't go the Pharisees' way. If you want to be justified in the sight of God, you don't go the Sadducees' way. If you want to be just in the sight of God, you don't go the traditional way. You go the way of the Lord because it says over and over, the just shall live by faith. Look at this in verse 38. But if any man draw back, if any man draws back to the old covenant, if any man draws back to the tradition of men, if any man draws back to the old religion, if any man draws back to old self-righteous living, if any man draws back to the works of the law, if any man draws back to the priesthood system of the Israelites, if any man draw back to the old covenant, it says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. He has revealed Christ unto us. He is the foundation. He is the rock of ages. Left for me. And it says, I had myself in thee. The water and the blood from thy riven side, broken side, wounded side, with flood be of sin, the double kill. If any man draws back away from Christ, who is a justifier, who is our savior, who is our sanctifier, who is our baptizer, who is our healer, who is our deliverer. If any man draws back from Christ, the very foundation and awesome and finisher of our faith, my soul shall not have any pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back. You'll not draw back. I said you'll not draw back. There are some people, the Lord called them out of the old tradition. And then when there is a little challenge, they go back to the old tradition. There are some people, the Lord called them out of that worthless religion that cannot save the soul. The religion they had in the past. And now when they have any little challenge, any little persecution, they go back to that same old thing that cannot save. That's why it says, the just shall live by faith. And as they are going with the Lord day by day, and week by week and month after month, year after year, you want to remember that the just and justified, the only way to live is to live by faith. If anyone draws back, but my soul shall not have pleasure in any of those people. And thank God, the way I look at you, you don't look like people going back. I said, I don't look like you want you to go back. It says, that's why it says, we, everybody say, we. We are not of them who draw back unto perdition. If you go back to the old religion, you go back to perdition. To the old tradition, you go back to perdition. To the old sea you left before, you go back to perdition. And all the things you've said goodbye to, then you say welcome again. You say good night, you say good evening again. And say I am back again. You are back into perdition. You are back into destruction. But thank God you are not going back. I say, thank God you are not going back. The devil will do almost everything he can think about. Why do you think there's persecution? It's so that you'll be able to live the way of righteousness and go back. Why do you think the people of the world, sometimes they try to threaten? That's to make you go back. They want you to go back to perdition, but the Lord has saved you. You are saved, you remain saved. You will not go back, I will not go back. We help each other. We encourage each other. We strengthen each other. We motivate each other to remain in Christ and to remain in the way of faith because the only way for us to remain justified and just in the sight of God is to remain by faith. That's why it says, we'll not go back to perdition, but we are them that believe to the saving of the soul, to the saving of the soul. There is present salvation, there is future salvation. There is a kind of perennial salvation. I am saved. And yet you're saving me every time from trouble, from trial, from temptation, from tribulation, from all the attacks of the evil one. He's saving me, rescuing me every time. And then there's a final salvation when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. And then we which are alive will be caught up together with them in the air. And then forever we say bye bye to the world and bye bye to temptation, bye bye to trial, bye bye to persecution persecution by battle the things of the world that's final salvation we got it now we're going to get the final one too because we're going to remain with the lord until we have that final sin i'm talking to you on the powerful life of faith and freedom the powerful life of faith and freedom when god calls us he calls us to a life of faith 
a life of freedom and there's power in such a life the powerful life of faith and freedom three things we're going to consider number one the penetrating power of the look of faith that's where we start the penetrating power of the look of faith number two the positive potentials of the life of faith positive potentials of the life of faith and then number three is the promise progress you will make progress i said you'll make progress the promise progress through the language of faith the language of it number one the penetrating power of the look of faith the Lord told the people in the Old Testament, and you see many of the people in the Old Testament, you need to understand, all those sacrifices, everything was pointing to Christ. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. All the animals, all the sacrifices, all the blood they shed, everything pointing to Christ. And when Christ came, all they were to look to was that Lamb of God. That's what you find in Isaiah, the look, the look, the look of faith. Isaiah chapter 45. In Isaiah chapter 45, I'm reading from verse 22. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 22 look unto me all look unto me and be you saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there is none else it says you're not looking at tradition to get saved at your religious works to get saved my goodness is better than my evil to get saved you're not looking like a Pharisee look unto me that's the almighty God the Alpha and the Omega that's the one the creator of the heavens and the earth that's the one the only the only way of salvation having the power to save and he says look unto me all the earth and there you'll be saved because there is none else look at hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 salvation you look unto Christ. Sanctification, you look unto Christ. Holy Ghost, baptism, you look unto Christ. The power to live day by day and overcome every challenge of your life. When he says, my grace is sufficient for you, you'll keep on looking unto him. Hebrews chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, was so great a cloud of witnesses. Then he goes on, let us lay aside every weight. There are things that will weigh you down when you consider them, when you think about them, when you concentrate on them, you lay them aside. And it says, and the sin will not so easily beset us. The sin that is always knocking at your door. The temptation that is always knocking at your door. Remember, they want you to go away from the faith. All those people, all those sins, the tempters and the temptresses, all those sins, they want to draw you away. And when they draw you away, they draw you away to perdition. But God forbid you will not perish. I said you will not perish. That's why it says we lay aside the sin we does not easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Look at verse 2, looking unto Jesus. Don't look unto Moses, looking on to Jesus. Don't look at animal sacrifice, looking on to Jesus. Don't look at yourself, I can save myself, I'm good enough, I'll try my best. Don't look at yourself, looking on to Jesus. Don't look, don't look at religion, that religion will save. No, no religion can save. Looking on to Jesus, Jesus and Jesus only is a savior. Is a sanctifier, is a healer, is the baptizer, is the coming king, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the ship because of you. He went through that agony, that shame, that kind of death. And he says, if he has paid the price for your salvation, there's only one direction to look. You're looking unto Jesus who despised the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And I'm telling you, as we look at Jesus this day, life will come to you in Jesus' name. Anything that is dead in your life, life will come in Jesus' name. Your family will come alive. The work of your hand will come alive. Your spiritual life will come alive. Everything about you, when you look unto Jesus, will come alive. And Jesus applied that story. Look at John chapter 3. In John chapter 3, 
I'm reading here from verse 14. John chapter 3, verse 14. Here are the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, even so, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. There is a compulsion, there is a must that Jesus Christ must be lifted up because that is the only way for justification. They just shall live by faith. Faith in Christ. The Christ who died. The Christ who shed his blood. The Christ who was nailed to the cross for you and for me. He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever, whosoever, thank God, whosoever, who is the whosoever there now? Oh, yeah, you can be saved. You're saved in Jesus' name. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, you will not perish, but have eternal life. The look of faith, as many as look upon that serpent in the Old Testament, they came back to life. You are coming back to life, eternal life in Jesus' name. And that's why the Lord said in Zechariah chapter 12, Zechariah chapter 12, and those people, and the people of Israel, and they thought, you know, they thought it was the rod of Moses. They thought it was the ark of the covenant. They thought it was the slaying of the animals. They thought it was washing with the water. They thought about this, about that, but the Lord was saying, that your salvation is in Luke, looking unto Jesus. And your deliverance is in the Luke, looking unto Jesus. We're looking at Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me. You see that Old Testament. It says, Your salvation, this is the source of salvation is a secret of salvation this is the evidence that you want to get saved when you look at the right person in the right direction they shall look upon me he said whom they have pierced referring to jesus christ they pierce my hand they pierce my feet and he says the way we can get saved after jesus christ has been pierced i've been crucified is that we look unto him then he said they shall look upon me whom they are pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And then it says, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Uh, you remember uh, the story of Lot? Let me show you in um, Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. You're looking unto the Lord, you're not looking back, you're not looking at old religion. You're not looking at old way of life. You're not looking at tradition. You're not looking at the priests. You're not looking at Pharisees. You're not looking at Sadducees. You're just looking, looking unto the Lord. It tells us in Genesis chapter 19. And I'm reading there from verse 15. Genesis chapter 19, verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened, Lord, saying, Arise, take thy wife. And I two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of this city. If you don't want to die, to perish in the iniquity of the city in which you live, of the country in which you live, you come out. You come to Christ. You look unto Christ. Because Christ is the only Savior. He's not one of the saviors. He's not a Savior. He is the Savior. The only Savior. And the way to be saved and the way to be just and justified in the sight of God is to look unto that Jesus and Jesus alone. In verse 16, and while he lingered, the men, that means the angels, they laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord be merciful unto him and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth, that's a man and his wife and two daughters, they brought them forth abroad. That he said, escape for thy life. And what's the next thing there? Tell me out loud. Look not behind thee. Keep on looking up. Looking up to the Lord. 
keep on looking to the one that has saved you and don't look back and don't look behind you neither stay thou in all the plain escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed wouldn't you say those four people were saved that's it they came out of of um, sodom and gomorrah and they didn't take part in the experience of the bonny city because the lord brought them out through those two angels the man the wife and the two daughters but he told them something keep on looking it's a look of faith we start now we're looking by faith and then tomorrow looking by faith and then next week looking by faith all the days of our lives we keep on looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith problems will arise temptations may come persecution may come sickness may even come and whatever it is may come but when they come we look unto jesus is our healer when they come we look on to jesus is our deliverer when those things come we look on to jesus christ is our provider any need may arise in any life after we come out of sodom and gomorrah but we keep on looking unto the lord look not behind thee look at verse 26 we're told but his wife did what tell me out loud look back from behind him and she became what a pillar of salt that is a monument of perdition an example of perdition because it says the joy shall be by faith but if any man draw back or looks back my soul shall have no pleasure in him you will not look back your wife will not look back your children will not look back our families will all be saved in jesus name in luke chapter 17 luke chapter 17 and see what jesus said concerning what we just read now in luke chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 26 luke chapter 17 we're looking at verse 26 it says and as it was in the days of noah so shall it be also in the days of the son of man they did eat they drank they married wives they were given in marriage until the day that noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all you'll not be a part of that destruction in verse 28 likewise also as it was in the days of lord they did eat they drank they brought they sold they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lord went out of Sodom, it turned fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. But starting, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. But starting to, let's everybody read this. But starting to, once you go. Another time again, once you go final time read that. that that's what jesus said that's what jesus said it's not just a religious man telling you remember lord's wife it was a true story that actually lord's wife looked back from behind him and jesus warned that very near the time of his coming there are people who have come out of sodom and gomorrah but then they will look back but thank god you will not look back I will not look back. Whatever happens, whatever challenges we may face, we'll keep on looking unto Jesus until the end of our lives in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the positive potentials of the life of faith. After we look unto Jesus and we're saved, we look unto Christ and we're born again. The very next thing is that now I continue to live a life of faith, not a life of unbelief, not a life of doubting not a life that is unstable looking unto jesus every time that leads me to the life of faith i'm looking at galatians chapter 2 verse 20. galatians chapter 2 and we're reading here from verse 20. it says in verse 20 i am crucified with christ you see when you look at christ by faith then you become born again you are a child of god eternal life comes into you you are now identified with the lord jesus christ and he says i'm crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i 
but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God it means to wake up in the morning thank you Lord today is another day to live by faith Another week is starting praise the Lord. Another week of living by faith. The life which I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now what does it mean when we say living by faith? Living by faith continually and constantly in your life. Number one, faith in the family. There will be faith in your family in Jesus' name. Number two is faith with the flock. Faith with the flock. Number three is faith with your friends. You're not going to keep friends that are unbelieving. They're always doubting the Lord. Always doubting the word of the Lord. You want to move on in the Lord. And then you have friends that are always pulling you back. Faith with your friends. Number four is faith for finance. What can you do without finance? And yet many people, because of looking for this and sourcing for this and reaching out for this, they are not able to live the life they ought to live but there's faith for finance number five is faith in the farming you know sometimes there's scarcity sometimes there is a need but then there is a faith in the farming number six is faith on the field on the field and then number seven is faith for the future faith for the future you see if you can comprehend and understand all those seven areas and say praise the lord i'm going to live by faith the life of faith number one what's number one Faith in the family. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading here from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into the place which he should after receive an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went. That's the father in the family. He had faith. And the Lord is saying, you are the head of the home. You must live by faith. When you talk, the talk of faith. When you decide, a decision based on faith. When you go here, you go on the basis of faith. And whatever it is you are doing, you do it by faith. You lay an example of living by faith to members of your family. Let's look at the wife. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11. And I'm reading here from verse 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive sin and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised that's the wife abraham the husband had faith faith in god and it's not just a one-time faith it's not just a kind of spurious faith a kind of faith that rose up today like the god that had covered jonah and then the following day it was gone it was continual 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 living by faith every time and now we come to the wife and the wife also by faith the wife also by faith look at the child now we're looking at isaac i'm looking at verse 20 by faith isaac blessed jacob and esau concerning things to come what a wonderful thing when the father, the mother, the children, the whole family, they're living by faith. And they talk by faith. And they decide by faith. And whatever it is they're doing, any direction they're moving, they're moving by faith. They're not moving by the principles of the world, actions of the world, the comments of the world, and the principles or perversions of the world. They're always living by faith. Number one, then, faith in the family. Number two, faith with the flock. Faith with the flock. When you belong to the fellowship of the children of God, I will say this is the fellowship of the people of God. And because they are the people of God, I mean they are missed now. Everything I do with the flock, in the flock, through the flock, I do that by faith. Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 32. It says, fear not. You know, when you are afraid, fearful, frightened, that's not a life of faith. But when, as a church of God, as a member of the body of Christ, as a member of a local church, when you are living by faith and you are not aligned, what you see, what you hear, the news flying in the air to bring any confusion, 
any conflict, any commotion in your mind. But you say, Christ is still there. He said yesterday, today, and forever. And your mind is not set on anybody. You know, so and so will get me through, and so and so will help me. And if so and so becomes a disappointment, then it means that I cannot live anymore. No. Well, the flock you manifest faith, fear not, little folk. And then it says, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He has given us the kingdom. I said he has given us the kingdom. I'm coming back to that same passage we read before. That's Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm coming back to verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. That's how the flock will live. Every member of the flock, that's how we live. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, if any man draw back, there's some people that leave the flock. They leave the flock. Uh, can you imagine a doctor abandoning all the patients in the hospital because they didn't give me this or give me this or give me that. Therefore, let them all die. That's like a shepherd leaving the flock. There are some people that are supposed to be leaders over the flock. They say because of, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with this. And so the flock must perish. And the flock must die. Because now, I don't agree with that. If any man draw back from the flock, from the assignment and the ministry that the Lord has given. They're looking up to man because man has not given me this in the flock. Then I cannot continue. Look unto Jesus. He is a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You will not lack in Jesus' name. And then he goes on. He says, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. There are some members of the church, of the flock. Because in the house fellowship, when I was sick, nobody visited me. But Jesus was with you. And Jesus is greater than all the people put together. When I had this need, they didn't give me this or give me this. But Jesus gave you his word. He gave you his blood. He gave you his name. He gave you an inheritance. All the things the Lord has given you because of a uh, hundred naira, because of two thousand naira that you didn't get from man. What's two thousand naira? What's one million naira in comparison with the blood Jesus gave you and the life Jesus gave you and the home in heaven Jesus gave you in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He's gone to prepare such a place for you because he give me this or that then you backslide you will not backslide i said you will not backslide look at that again it says now the just shall live by faith remain in the flock by faith remain there and whatever problem you have the lord will solve the problem in jesus name it says if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him number three faith with friends Faith with friends. Don't have friends that will pull you down. You know some people, it's like uh, they are intimately connected with the people always pulling them down. The people that will destroy them. The people that will sap their energy and sap their faith. The people that will make them look back. You know, it's making you cry every day. It's making you weep every day. It's making you turn away from the Lord who has saved you. And you are still associated and attached with that friend. Get friends that have faith like you have, of like precious faith. I'm looking at Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 3. Mark chapter 2, verse 3. It says, And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, and which was born of four. These four friends of the paralyzed man. These four friends of the helpless man, they brought him to Jesus, and when they could not come near unto him for the prayers, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw, what did he see? Their faith, their faith, the faith of the man and the faith of his four friends. Have faith in God with your friends. Surround yourself with people. So when you become weak, they'll be strong and carry you up and they carry you to Jesus. They will know your conviction. They will know that you don't want them to carry you to a harbourless house when you're unconscious. You know, there are some people we cannot tell what's their conviction. And so when eventually they get to the place when they cannot decide for themselves, when they cannot talk for themselves, when they appear unconscious, then some people will come and say, it's our friend, it's our friend. We're going to take him. And we members of the church will say, no, 
people you cannot say he's a member what kind of member he is very close to us and then they asking the man what do you want who do you want to carry you he'll be nodding his head you, we are your friends shall we carry you anywhere we want to carry you? he'll nod he said they say you see now even though the man cannot talk he's nodding his head and they get him to a habali's house and eventually some of them they die there and then after they die then they reject they say church come and bury your member is that your member i said is that your member no but you see if you surround yourself with people that are having faith in christ you believe in salvation they believe you believe in sanctification they believe you believe in the power of the holy ghost they believe you believe that jesus is the only way to the heart of the father and to heaven and they believe the same thing with you when jesus saw their faith then he said to the sick of the palsy son thy sin be forgiven thee the faith of friends number four is faith for finance faith for finance i'm looking at malachi chapter three Malachi chapter 3. In Malachi chapter 3, I'm reading here from verse 10. Malachi chapter 3, we're looking at verse 10. It says, Bring ye all the tithes unto the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith. It says, Prove me. If you say you trust me, prove me. You have confidence in me, prove me. You have faith in me, prove me. You see, there are some people, they cannot prove God. At the time they have challenges, at the time they have difficulties, they say, well, things are hard now. In fact, you even maintain your job now. Days is tough and difficult. They cannot prove God at such a time. We need faith. And faith to keep on paying our tithes and offering. Because that's what the Lord has commanded. He said, when you bring all your tithes into the storehouse, that there be meat in my house and so tenants in my house and put me now here with says the lord of hosts if i will not open unto you the windows of heaven and then he says and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it the lord will do it i said the lord will do it you have faith in god i said you have faith in god it says so and you will reap if you sow abundantly you're going to reap abundantly in jesus name and i will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and ye shall not destroy the fruits of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field says the lord of us and all the nations shall call you what blessed for ye shall be a delightsome land says the lord of hosts number five faith in the farming faith in the farming uh, there's a recession and you know that uh, it's like things are going down they thought uh, the economy is recovering and when people think that this is the time of farming and they say this is not the time to go to church because you know going to church now at this difficult time no faith they say this is not the time to be uh, you know to be the kind of kind and generous to anybody because now you know that you know how things are outside and it's not the time to be philanthropic and to give this and give that because you know the condition of life where we're living now because of this farming they're going to believe you remain in faith i say you remain in faith dry season you remain in faith rainy season you remain in faith and um, fruitful time you remain in faith because it is a faith that will carry you through number five is faith in the farming i'm looking at first kings chapter 17 first kings chapter 17 verse 8 and the watch of the lord came unto him saying arise Get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded the widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that i may drink and as she was going to fetch it he called to her and said bring me i pray thee a morsel of bread in thine hand and she said as the lord thy god liveth i have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise and behold i'm gathering two sticks that i may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and 
that we may eat it and die. No job, no resources, nothing else to depend upon. It was a time of farming. And you know, there are some people like that. They say, what else are we looking for? Yeah, and they say, we're wonderful our church. We're still having programs and spending money for handbills and posters and publicity and announcement over the radio. Announcement every... There's no money. And there's no money. We're planning this and planning that. The, 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 why don't we think about something that know a little bit of economizing and the people that know economy and then they can teach us that you know we have to even the world they're cutting down this and cutting down this and cutting down this when you see it, our people are going to learn that in the world in which we live today the world is cutting down you know what they're telling us they say look at the world and learn they say don't look at Jesus anymore don't look at the resources of Christ anymore don't look at the great commission anymore don't look at the commandment of the Lord anymore don't look at the provision of the Lord anymore don't look at your Bible forget the Bible look at the world the world is caught you now a caught over there a caught over there a caught over there a caught over there the caught education allowance the caught medical allowance the caught you know even tourism you know they used to go here and they're cutting all that they caught salaries they caught everything why doesn't the church learn because church is looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith and so if you're a local church and then we're to our program we're making announcement now the gs is coming we're going to do this we're going to do that you know somebody says hey, pastor can i you know just lend you some wisdom here uh, can i contribute my part i'm not contributing money but i have something to contribute an idea and what's your idea my idea is the gs himself should know that this is not the time to plan programs because because we need to cut down on our expenses and spending and therefore let, let's tell him that you know when this time passes before Jesus comes if there are programs to hold we'll hold program but if the time of farming does not pass until Jesus comes Lord Jesus we're sorry no more programs, no evangelism, no missionary work, nothing at all. All this gathering of people and spending money, nothing anymore. Because economy is down, their God is dead. My God is alive. I said my God is alive. My provider is alive. And your provider will remain alive in Jesus' name. You see, we must live by faith at the time of the farming. And that's why it says, look at this in verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. I said, fear not. You will not die. I said, you will not die. And our church will not go bankrupt in Jesus' name. Fear not. He said, go and do as thou hast said. But make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for thee and for thy son hear the word of the lord now for thus says the lord god of israel the barrel of meal shall not waste i thought you say amen. amen neither shall the cross of oil fail until the day that the lord sendeth rain upon the earth and she went and did according to the saying of elijah and she and he and her house did eat many days you will eat many days and the barrel of meal wasted not neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the lord which is spake by elijah it will happen in jesus name uh, look at second kings chapter seven second kings chapter seven there's some people after hearing all that they say yes but i understand but i hear what you say but i feel that may happen but if you always have a but on your faith that faith is not complete that faith is not perfect that faith is not lively that faith is not dynamic enough remove the but in your faith and say with god all things are possible and if thou canst believe all things are possible to them that believe you'll find that possibility in jesus name second kings i'm looking at chapter seven and i'm looking at it from verse i'm looking at verse one it says then elisha said hear ye the watch of the lord it was a time of farming thus says the lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour 
be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord, then an officer, then a leader, then the assistant of the king, then one of the decision makers, then one of the VIPs around the king, then a lord on whose side the king lead and such the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might they seem be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but what? Thou shalt not eat thereof. I'm going to take part in this revival. This surplus, this abundance coming, I'm going to be a part of it. I'll be alive to see it. Something is happening already. And it will come to your house in Jesus' name. But you know, this particular Lord not wanting to live by faith. That this is not the time to talk about faith. Look at the condition of our country. And look at the condition of this and of that. This is not the time to live by faith. Even if the Lord will open the windows of heaven. How can that be? And the man of God said, let God be God and all men liars. Whether you believe it or not, it is going to happen. I said it is going to happen. An abundant showers of blessing will come upon our church, every local church. A great revival, a mighty revival will come upon our whole church in Jesus' name. Uh, look at this now in verse 16. In verse 16 it says, uh, the fulfillment came, the fulfillment will come for our church. And the people went out and spoiled the tents of, of the Syrians. So, a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. According to, according to, according to the word of the Lord. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate. And the people trudged upon him in the gate. And he died as the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him. And he died. It, it, the problem is not that he died. The problem is that he died in unbelief. Everybody will die one day. Because appointed unto man wants to die. But to die in unbelief. To die fighting against the revelation of the Lord. To die fighting against the progress of the kingdom of God. That's a tragedy. He died in unbelief. You'll not die in unbelief in Jesus' name. Number six is faith on the field. Faith on the field. Faith on the field. I'm looking at chapter 13 of Matthew. Matthew chapter 13. In Matthew chapter 13, I'm reading here from verse 38. Matthew chapter 13, we're looking at verse 38. It says, the field is the world. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The field is the world. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye, and then it says, the field is the world. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world before Christ comes. And the field is the world. And when you get to that field in the world, you have faith in God. Because it is that faith in God that will get so saved. Is that faith in God that will get believers sanctified? Is that faith in Christ that will get people healed? You keep on holding crusades. You don't wait until, you know, the years is coming to our state, is coming to our region. Before he comes, get some crusades done there and get some work done over there, winning souls to the Lord every time. Because the field is the world. It's not only the years that you have faith on the field. You too should have faith on the field. You'll have that faith in Jesus' name. I said you have the faith in Jesus name while Peter was evangelizing having faith on the field here was Philip and he was in Samaria having faith on the field that faith should continue John chapter 4 in John chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 34 John chapter 4 verse 34 it tells us Jesus said unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work say not ye there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. Look up and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. It says, he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. He wants us to bring the fruit of those souls unto life eternal, and we can only do that by faith. 
the world is the field the field is the world manifest faith on that field in first john chapter 5 verse 4 for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith faith on the field faith on the field go into all the world and manifest faith and go with faith number seven is faith for the future faith for the future there are many people during the days of revival our faith is rising we praise the lord they are there i'm there anytime the cheers is there i am there too i'm not going to go back i'm going to participate in all the prayer all the preaching i am there count on me and then how about the future how about next week how about next month how about the days ahead for us to understand it's not just faith for the hour and faith for the present even for the rest of our lives will continue living by faith and that faith will get you over and pull you through in jesus name give me a good amen there yeah. point number three now is the promise progress through the language of faith the promise progress through the language of faith i'm looking at mark chapter 11 mark chapter 11 and i'm reading here from verse 22 mark chapter 11 verse 22 and jesus answering says unto them have faith in god don't have faith in a pharisee have faith in god don't have faith in religion have faith in god don't have faith in tradition have faith in god don't have faith in yourself i believe myself i'm the captain of my soul i'm the master of my faith not faith in yourself have faith in god god is the one that is higher than the highest is the mighty one is the omnipotent one is a great one and because of who he is that's why he's saying the highest power and the highest the greatest love you can have is this of god have faith in god for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain praise the lord every mountain will move out of your life be thou, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have i said he shall have i said he shall have he shall have whatsoever he says whatsoever he says what's that that's confession he's saying it he's saying i confess that this mountain in my life will move away I said, I confess that this mountain in my life will move away. I confess that this difficulty will be resolved. I confess that this relationship will be taken care of. I confess that this poverty will vanish away. I confess that this barrenness will vanish away. And he says, he shall have. He shall have whatsoever he says many people don't understand about confession the sake of only confessing sin only confessing sin but you confess what you believe let me tell you this number one is confession that brings conviction that brings conviction you say i shall not die i said i shall not die but i will live to declare the glory of god and then your mind says, uh uh, but you're sick, uh uh, but your brain is knocking, uh uh, but your tummy is churning, uh uh, but your knees are weak. And then you say it again, I shall not die but live to declare the glory of God. And then the medical doctor says, This and this, and then you say, But I shall not die, I will live to declare the glory of God. And then you slept in the night, you had a dream, and the dream said, Uh huh, they came and then they showed coughing. You woke up in the morning you say once again what did you say i'm looking at some 118 some 118 i'm looking at verse 17 some 118 verse 17 everybody open your bible it says i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord so when you wake up in the morning you say that you know what that's going to do is going to bring conviction your mind will wake up your mind will realize it's like when you you know you have a little child at home and you tell that child something today and the child doesn't really understand and then you tell that child the second day the child does not understand you tell this the same thing the third day the child is waking up is getting aware that this is what daddy is saying this is what mommy is saying then you say it and say it and say it every day 
act, act one, your child will believe that because you have been saying that now from the beginning of the year until this time. So, confession leads to conviction. Number three, it leads to correction. Correction. Because all that confession you are making will be correcting the negative thoughts you have. The negative self-talk that you have. The negative impression, opinion you have about yourself. Confession, number two, will lead to conviction. Number three, will lead to correction. Number four, will lead to consecration. If I'm going to live, I'm not going to die. What am I going to do with the lease of life the Lord is giving me? What am I going to do with the extra time the Lord is giving me? Because Isaiah told Ezekiah, set your house in order, for you will surely die. And then when Isaiah went away, Ezekiah turned to the wall and said, me to die? He said, God, let's talk about this. I will not die. I said, I will not die. But Isaiah said, you're going to die. I said, I will not die. The prophet said, you are going to die. I said, I will not die. They saw vision in their church that you are going to die. But I said, I will not die. But I will live to declare the works of God. And then God said, all right, I see your confession. I see your conviction. And I see also the correction you are making. And I'm seeing now your consecration. I'm going to give you 15 years. What are you going to do with the 15 years? You see, it's not just I confess. The confession will Will lead me to some other things it leads me to consecration i said this thing you are giving me now this new life you are giving me now this extra time you are giving me now this is what i'm going to deal with that number five it will lead me to connection connection i'm connected with the almighty it's my confession that connects me with the almighty you know if i if i don't confess that that my god is great my god is mighty my God is watching over me. My God is going to take care of me. There'll be no connection. There'll be a break. But it's my confession that breaks my connection. And then number six is commendation. Commendation. The Lord says, I see him. I'm going to add 15 years. I see him. I'm going to give him the job. I see him. I'm going to make him victorious. I see him. I'm going to make him defeat Goliath. I see his confession. Because of that, I'm going to do something. And then you have number seven, confirmation. Everybody say confirmation. And it's as you confess in your mouth the promise of God, the power of God, there'll be a confirmation in your life, every day of your life in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 20. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. And the whole church said, Amen. Your word from today will be confirmed. Whatever you want in your life, confess it, confess it, because a confirmation is coming in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 54, I'm looking at 18, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 54, we're looking at verse 17. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. You have won the victory already. Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading to you here in verse 19. They shall fight against thee, but it shall not prevail. They shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. You are delivered already in Jesus' name. Now the Lord is telling you, look at Psalm, look at the Psalms. We're looking at the word of God. This is what the Lord wants you to confess. This is what he wants you to say out. Don't say any negative thing anymore. Live by faith. Live by faith. And let that faith pull you through. Let that faith do everything that God wants you to do. It says in Psalm 81 verse 10. Psalm 81 verse 10. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Tell me what follows that. Open thy mouth wide and I will feel it. Are you there? I said, are you there? Inheritance is yours. Blessings are yours. Good things are yours. All things you ever desired in your life, for your life, for your spirit, for your soul, for your mind, for, for your family. Everything is available now. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Are you ready for that? 
Why don't you stand up and tell the Lord, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Live by faith. Live by faith. Live by faith. It's a life of faith that counts. In the life of faith that counts, the Lord is saying, You live by faith, you live by faith. Open your mouth wide, and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide, and I will feel it. Salvation is yours, holiness is yours, power is yours, authority is yours, protection is yours, provision is yours, inheritance is yours. You will not be weak. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Confess it, confess it, confess it. Confess it, confess it, confess it. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the sick say, I am healed. Let the oppressed say, I am free. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are free. The Lord has confirmed it. The blessing is yours. You are a child of blessing. A child of blessing. There shall be showers of blessings upon your life. The days of sorrow, that's gone. The days of heartache, all that is gone. The days of living from hand to mouth, all that is gone. The days of being grieved and being in pain, all that is gone. And the days of being driven here and there by the winds of adversity, all that is gone. Now is the day of joy, the day of revival, the day of healing, the day of deliverance, the day of power, the day of authority, the day of anointing. It has come, it has come. Believe and accept and live by faith and live by faith and live by faith in Jesus name we pray and the victorious people of God said I rejoice with you the past is gone and buried a new life is rising in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorrow, that is gone. Amen. Heartache, that is gone. Amen. Broken family, that is gone. Amen. Premature death, that is gone. Amen. Attacks, affliction, that is gone. Amen. Yokes, all gone. Amen. Cause, all gone. Amen. Rise up now with a new attitude. This is a new you. I said, this is a new you. Your life is renewed. Everything will be new in your life in Jesus' name. Everything you have missed from the day you are born until this time. There is a restoration. There is a restoration. There is a restoration. It has come in Jesus' name. Confession brings possession. Confession brings possession. Confession brings possession. Everything you confess, every good thing you are going to possess. Raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify your name today because of a new life. A new life of faith. A new life of power. A new life of authority. A new life of provision. A new life when our joys will be full. I pray for every brother, every sister, everyone hearing the message and the prayer now. I pray, Lord, fullness of joy will come upon everyone in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, I pray all the things of the past that brought tears and sorrow or grief and pain to any of your people, wipe them away. From this day, I pray, there will be showers of blessing. In our spirit, in our soul, in our mind, in our emotion, in our body, in our house, in the house fellowship, in the local church, in all our schools, everywhere. Showers of blessing in Jesus' name. Silence the enemies of your people. And Lord, I pray as they have opened their mouths wide, fill their mouth with blessing. I pray that from now on, testimonies everywhere, miracles everywhere, the confirmation of your word in every life in Jesus' name. Make your people to forget the past. Make your people to see to the future at the new level of blessing you are calling us to help everyone inherit in Jesus' name. Bless everyone without exception. Confirm it, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said.